dear students now in this experiment we will learn to determine the concentration of copper in the given copper sulfate solution using colorimetry so colorimetry is measurement of light let us see how uh, this experiment can be performed when the light passes through a solution a part of it is absorbed a part of it is deflected and remaining is transmitted so i'll first explain it on the sheet of paper so here we can see when the incident light io passes through a solution part is absorbed ia part is reflected ir and remaining is transmitted but for a glass air interface the reflection is negligible therefore io is equal to ia plus it that is the sum of absorbance plus transmittance transmittance can be mathematically expressed as it by io and absorbance is log 1 by t which is equal to log io by it and absorbance is nothing but the od that we measure on the colorimeter we can also say that absorbance is equal to e c t where e is the epsilon and this molar absorptivity coefficient which is a constant and it is constant for a given substance t is the path length and is unity therefore absorbance whatever we measure is directly proportional to the concentration and if we plot absorbance versus c we get a straight line passing through the origin this plot is called calibration curve with the help of this calibration curve we can determine the concentration of any given substance using the calibration curve of the same substance in different concentrations so to plot the calibration curve we have to take the substance in varying concentrations and the volume is kept constant let us see the experiment so a is equal to ect is lambert's and beer's law so this coloring metric is based upon lambert's law and beer's law together we call it lambert's and beer's law with the increase in the concentration in the solution the absorbance increases similarly with the increase in thickness the absorbance increases but we are taking thickness as constant that is unity therefore a will be directly proportional to c for doing this experiment we need these miniature flasks 25 ml flasks and we have to prepare solutions taking copper sulfate in varying volumes that is 5 ml 2.5 ml 7.5 ml 10 and 12.5 ml but to each volumetric flask containing these varied varied amount of copper sulfate we will add 2.5 ml ammonium hydroxide and then we will make it up to the mark like this 2.5 ml copper sulfate plus 2.5 ml ammonium hydroxide and remaining water so like this i have prepared a series of copper sulfate solutions 2.5 5 7.5 10 and 12.5 and in one flask i have prepared a blank solution that does not contain copper sulfate solution that means it only contains 2.5 ml ammonium hydroxide and remaining water after doing this we will mix the solutions to make them homogeneous the test solution is given to us in a small volumetric flask to which we will add only 2.5 ml ammonium hydroxide and remaining water then we will mix it so now i will tell you how to record the absorbance using this color unit so whenever we will switch on switch on the instrument it should always display one we also require one tissue paper and the nasal tube this is called the nasal tube so first we will set this apparatus at 
using the blank solution and for using this blank solution first we should rinse this nasal tube with the blank solution and then we should fill it with the blank solution about 3 fourth wash it after washing we must fill and then wipe it from all the sides then we will put it here in the groove given here and this mark is there on the instrument so the solution should be little higher than this mark bring the wavelength to 59 using the right side knob this is the filter 59 or 590 nanometers and now it is showing some reading with the blank so adjust to 0 with the left side knob bring it to 0 once it is adjusted then we will throw this solution from the Nestle tube fill it with the solution first that is 2.5 ml and take the reading I will show it now So now I will, I am filling this with the 2.5 ml copper sulphate solution, wipe it with the tissue paper, this is already adjusted so place it here and we will take the reading, first reading whatever it is showing we will take this reading and this is how we will do the experiment with all the solutions there by repeating the same procedure taking one by one the different solutions and recording the absorbance at 590 nanometers so this is how it is showing the reading and we will complete this experiment finally we will take the reading for the test solution also and now let us see how to plot the graph. So we have already recorded the absorbance using the various solutions and uh, then we will plot the curve taking the volume on the volume of copper sulphate on the x axis absorbance that is OD on the y axis and we get the curve where the points are falling for 2.5 5, 7.5, 10 and 12.5 we have recorded here as 0 0.12, 0 0.23, 0 0.33, 0 0.44 and 0 0.55 and the test solution was 0 0.26 so we get a straight line passing through the origin this straight line should always pass through the origin that is 0 and on this straight line if we plot the absorbance of the test solution that is 0 0.26 and join it with this straight line dropping a perpendicular on the x axis we get 6 ml that is the copper sulphate solution given to us as a test solution was 6 ml stock solution contained 4 grams of copper sulphate per liter that means 0 0.004 grams per ml therefore we can go for the calculations that if 1 ml of copper sulphate contains 0 0.004 grams of copper sulphate then x ml solution will contain x into 0 0.004 and here x is test solution and we have taken from the graph that it is 6 ml so 6 into 0 0.004 will be 0 0.024 grams of copper sulphate given to us now the amount of copper sulphate in 6 ml Copper, uh, copper sulfate solution is 0 0.024 multiplied by the equivalent weight of copper divided by the molecular weight of copper sulfate. We get 0 0.0061 grams of copper in the given test solution. So that shows that 6.1 milligrams of copper was present in 24 grams of copper sulfate using colorimetry. It's a very interesting technique because with the help of this technique we can determine even the traces of samples given to us. Thank you.